Hello, I'm Kimberly, and welcome to the weekend edition of the Nave News Update. It's Friday, November 22nd, and many of the stories you hear here can be found at IndianCountryNews.com. And here's the news for the day from the Associated Press and other Native news sources. In a historic vote that could vastly increase their membership, White Earth Band of Ojibwe members have overwhelmingly approved a new constitution. The new document removes a requirement that tribal citizens possess one quarter Minnesota Chippewa blood, a controversial blood quantum standard adopted at the urging of the federal government decades ago. Under the new constitution, White Earth's declining citizenship will instead be based on lineal descent. The change could mean more than doubling the population, which now stands at under 20,000. According to the ballots counted November 19th, nearly 80% of the nearly 3,500 votes cast approved of a adopting a new constitution, which in addition to changing citizenship standards, will create a tribal government with three branches and a separation of powers instead of one tribal council overseeing everything. The new constitution could take a year or two to implement. White Earth is the first tribe in Minnesota to discard its governance structure and start over. Newmont Mining Company expects to begin cleanup of a defunct uranium mine on the Spokane Indian Reservation by 2015. The company is working on design proposals for the remediation of the Midnight Mine, which opened in the 1950s to produce uranium for the U.S.-Soviet nuclear arms race. About 33 million tons of radioactive waste, rock, and ore remain at the 350-acre site above the Spokane River. The plan is to fill in open pits left from the mine excavations with the waste, rock, and ore. The pits would be capped to keep radon gas from escaping. Groundwater in the pits will be collected and treated and then piped seven miles to the Spokane River. Newmont already collects and treats water at the old mine site, but that water is currently discharged in Blue Creek, a tributary of the Spokane River. Discharging the treated wastewater directly into the Spokane River will reduce the impacts to Blue Creek where the tribe is working to reestablish a native red band trout run. The cleanup will take about a decade and cost an estimated $193 million. The U.S. Department of Agriculture's Natural Resources Conservation Service has helped tribes increase the number of rice beds they cultivate with financial assistance from farm bill programs. The Lackview Desire Band of Lake Superior Chippewa in Michigan's Upper Peninsula was the first tribe to participate. Tribal members planted about 12 acres of wild rice at six locations in 2006. The importance of wild rice to tribes in Michigan was recently showcased in a poster honoring Native American Heritage Month held each November. Michigan artist Shirley Baker painted the poster depicting three women in a canoe harvesting wild rice. The poster was chosen as NRCS's national poster to highlight the month, which is displayed at the agency's offices across the country. For more than 70 years, a poll stood watch over a Boy Scout park in Fremont, Illinois. This poll shared a story carved in wood of the Native American culture to those who visited the park until it was removed in 2008. And now the Burke Museum in Seattle, Washington wants to bring the story poll created in the Northwest by Sonomish tribal leader William Shelton home. After being carved by Shelton, the 37-foot pole was sent to Illinois in 1935. There it stood in Crate Park until 2008 while weather and bugs led to its decay. The story pole was taken down five years ago and has remained in a warehouse ever since. Shelton is recognized for carving a number of poles between 1910 and the 1930s, and this particular pole tells the same kind of story found on all his poles. Indian Land Tenure Foundation has created a website with Native American land curriculum for pre-K and K-12 through classrooms. Lessons of Our Land provides American Indian and non-Indian students with broader insight and understanding of land, cultures, inherent rights, and tribal sovereignty. The nearly 200 searchable lessons are for all educational levels and free to access. Lessons of Our Land is designed to be incorporated in a number of educational subjects and is adaptable to include the history and culture of regions Indian nations. The curriculum teaches the Native American story of this land from historical to modern times. Since 2005, the Lessons of Our Land curriculum has been successfully implemented in 105 tribal schools, public schools, and colleges in Arizona, California, Idaho, Michigan, 
Minnesota, Montana, South Dakota, and Washington. For more information, you can check out lessonsofourland.org. And that's another roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. I'd like to thank you for joining me and have a grand day.